Good afternoon, Marie News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 9, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, body of missing British man found in St. Elizabeth after four days search. Residents in the Balarns Valley area of St. Elizabeth have reportedly discovered the unresponsive body of a British man four days after he went missing during a nature walk. The man, Robert Dyer, 60, said to be diabetic, arrived in the island on Friday and was reportedly seen with his brother. The senior citizen reportedly told relatives that he was going for a nature walk on Sunday. Dyer was reportedly found unresponsive in a vegetated area. The news understands that he last communicated with relatives about 1 p.m. on Monday to say he got lost. A source told the news that Dyer's walking stick was found about 2 a.m. on Thursday. The people found his walking stick and decided that they were going to push out early on Thursday to continue the search. He was found close to Bull Savannah, so it seems as if he made a wrong turn, the source said. Efforts to get an update on the latest development from the head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Acting Superintendent Coleridge Minto, were unsuccessful up to press time. On Tuesday, Minto said citizens of Ballarza Valley, the Jamaica Defense Force Airway, and the K-9 Division were assisting in the search. We have already gone through miles of terrain and the search is still ongoing as we continue our efforts to locate this individual, he had said. Minto on Wednesday said scores of police personnel were among a search team. He said drones were also used during the search. Men shot and injured at a wholesale in Clarendon. Two men were shot and injured while at a wholesale at Waterworks in Frankfield, Clarendon on Wednesday afternoon. The men, whose identities the police have not yet released, have since been hospitalized. Reports are that around 2.07 p.m., the men were at a tour guide retail wholesale and restaurant when a silver Subaru motor car drove up. One man alighted from the vehicle, the police said, and opened gunfire at them. According to reports, one of the men was hit in his left leg, while the other received gunshot wounds to both legs. They were then rushed to hospital. A motive for the attack has not yet been established. Police responding to security concern at several schools. The police are responding to at least five schools in three parishes after hundreds of students were sent home over a security concern. Deputy Commissioner Fitz Bailey says an email was circulated suggesting explosives that were placed at a number of schools. No incident has been reported. Some of the affected schools include Lennon and Denby High Schools in Clarendon, Greater Portmore, Old Harbour and Ascot High Schools in St. Catherine, and William Nib High in Trelawney. Head of the St. Catherine South Police Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips said he was comfortable with the response and the coordination with the fire brigade and the ambulance service. We are living in serious times and believe that things like these, you can't take it for granted. We have to respond and respond effectively. And as a force, we have to seek to strengthen our capacity to deal with these, he said. Phillips said investigators from the Police Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch and the Communication Forensic Cybercrimes Department will be leading the probe to identify the source of the email. Meanwhile, Education Minister Favel Williams says the ministry is monitoring the security threats made to several schools. Principals receiving the email threats have exercised the due caution and closed the schools. The security and the safety of our students, teachers and the staff is of utmost importance. We will update again, she said in a post on X, formerly Twitter. Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the JCF's Corporate Communications Unit, said emergency services have been called to schools in Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine, Clarendon and Trelawney. She said that the police are also collaborating with several agencies, including the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, who has been checking the various locations. The Sabana Basic School in Portmore, St. Catherine, was evacuated as it is in close proximity to the Greater Portmore High School, which received a threat via email. I can confirm that we are investigating a matter where a number of schools across the island have been receiving correspondence, I think that emails about uh, purporting to be bomb threats. As a result, we have activated our response and uh, working in collaboration with other agencies to include the Office of um, Disaster Preparedness, 
just making all the checks and so on. So um, they have been checking the various locations, even as I speak. So as we get some more information, we'll be able to provide it. Record her was a principal of Greater Portmore High said the school was not the sender's target. However, the institution was evacuated based on the message in the email. Well, this morning when we arrived, um, we received an email, and the email alluded to explosive device um, placed on the compound. Um, the information we received, though, would have indicated that the email was addressed to another school, but when you check the thread, it was not actually sent to that school, but sent to us. And, uh, in order to ensure that we create a safe environment, we reach out to the police high commands. And the advice was for us to vacate, uh, provide an opportunity for the necessary team to come in and do due diligence. Woman accused of killing cop husband to plead guilty to manslaughter. The prosecution in the case against the Casian Blair, the woman accused of killing her husband, Constable Damon Blair, in May has agreed to accept a lesser plea of manslaughter. This was disclosed during Thursday morning's hearing in the Home Circuit Court. Mrs. Blair, who is fit to plea but has mental health challenges, was charged with murder, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and unauthorized possession of firearm. Prior to Thursday's adjournment, presiding judge Justice Leighton Pusey asked the prosecution about the other two charges. The prosecution told the court that it needed additional time to have further discussion with Mrs. Blair's attorneys Tamika Harris and General Jim MacDonald in relation to the firearm and ammunition charges. Mrs. Blair was further remanded until Friday. Constable Blair was killed in an alleged domestic dispute in Somerset District, Mandeville, Manchester on May 29. Political leaders urged to agree on extension of SOE in St. James. A call is being made for leaders of both political parties to meet and discuss the possibility of extending the state of public emergency declared Wednesday in St. James. The SOE, which will remain in effect for an initial period of 14 days, was imposed in response to increased gang violence. Custos of St. James, Bishop Conrad Pitkin, says that the leaders should also consider extending the measure as part of efforts to reduce the crime and violence in the parish. I've never seen and will never see it as a permanent thing. It has to be a short-term measure. Um, the, the epidemic is it's a tool 